I used to think our music system was stupidly obscure. Tiny dots meaning even tinier pauses. Now I'm older, I can see what an amazing system of recording music notation is, and how it's revolutionised all of our music. I mean, how else would you be able to put this on paper? And make it look so easy. Notation is the system by which we read music. It's how to make sense of the dots on the page. Our story begins with praying monks. No, not that sort of praying. Our story begins with the earliest Christian prayers, known as plain songs. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's common practice to use musical pitch with the incantation of religious texts. With these early monks, a method evolved of adding dots above the words. If the dots went up, so did the incantation, and down meant down. Sometime around the 9th century, distinct lines were employed to tell more accurately the position of notes, which would evolve into our current system. The effect on music was profound. You might even compare it to the invention of writing for literature. Perversely, it's only when you fix notes onto a page that the song can begin to change. This was a way to preserve music, sure, but more importantly still, to communicate and transmit musical ideas to different people, in different places, and even in different times. The act of notation could personalise the work. It's no coincidence that the first great early composers, like Perrotin or Hildegard von Bingen, emerged after notation had been codified. It was a period of high musical invention after what had been centuries of slow and steady development. A musical school is written on five lines, known as a staff or stave. Each line, and then space between the lines, represents a different note. We give these notes letters for names. We start at an A and go up to the alphabet G before starting on A again, a note an octave higher. We can also add what we call accidentals, most commonly the sharp and flat signs, to tell us whether the note is sharpened, i.e. goes up a semitone, or flattened, i.e. down a semitone. For usual convention, the centre line, which we don't usually see, marks the position for middle C, our most important starting note in all music. If we go above this line, we go up the alphabet, and conversely the other way. You can also add mini lines above and below, ledger lines they're called, to reach extra notes clearly. Now, our staves need an axis to fix where we are, so we use a symbol called a clef to show how high or low we are in the scale. On high, a treble clef, indicating middle C is below. Underneath, the bass clef, telling you middle C is the line above. Now this is perfect for piano music, with the treble clef generally acting for the right hand and the bass for the left. And, by the way, the treble clef is also known as the G clef, because it's written from the G note line, and the bass clef, the F clef, for the same reason. You can also employ different clefs, for example the alto clef, used by mid-range instruments like the viola, which indicates middle C as the centre of the bar lines. So, that defines everything up and down our manuscript, the vertical axis, which is about pitch. The horizontal axis represents time. Our stave is divided by vertical bar lines, which describe a full beat or measure for the music. Different shapes and shades of notes denote different note lengths, how long you play those notes for, and the time signature at the very start of our music tells us what sort of rhythmic beat we are using. The top number is the beats in the bar, the bottom number is the type of beat, and most common is 4-4 four, four time, that's four crotchets per bar. In fact, so common is this that it's usually represented by a C for common time, awfully common. <laughs> You can also add accents to give all sorts of different information on how to play your notes. Notation itself can also be encoded within music. Bach did so many hundreds of years ago, but to see how, you need to understand German notation, which uses the letter B for B flat, but the letter H or H for B natural. That meant Bach could spell his name in music, four notes that have become known as the Bach motif. used by Bach himself and a number of other composers. A more modern version comes from Sostakovich, who turned his initials, D-S-C-H, into the German D-E-flat-C, Ash. You see, flat in German is written as an S, so E-flat can be written as E-S, which sounds like S, thus the Sostakovich motif, which he has used repeatedly throughout his career. How and why will be the subject of another video. Please like and subscribe.